process. Let's begin. Find a comfortable seat. Rest your hands gently on your thighs. Take your upper arms in line with your side body. Simply begin by noticing. Maybe there's a swirl of thoughts running around. And see if you can allow whatever thoughts you have not to go away, because they don't necessarily go away, but to slow down. And perhaps moving them to the back bottom part of your brain. And let them rest there. giving you space to drop your awareness into the body. Balance evenly on the sits bones, left sit bone, right sit bone. Find the even balance. What do you need to adjust to create an even balance there? And then maintain that even balance and lengthen from the inner thighs through the inner knees, but also from the upper inner thighs back towards the abdomen, from the knee to the lower abdomen, this whole area lengthening. See if you can find an evenness on both sides. Notice which side is working more or harder or just seems to have more intelligence to it. And yet, can you adjust the messages from the brain to the body to create an evenness on the two sides or, or evener, if not an evenness. I can't say I've ever achieved evenness, but I get evener. At the same time as you lengthen the inner thighs, draw from the outer knees to the outer hips and compact the hips together. So we need to do that in such a way where you're compacting the outer hips but you're not gripping the inner thighs. The inner thighs are still lengthening, elongating. And the outer quadricep muscle, very strong, hips very compacted. So you have to use your brain slightly differently than, than gripping everything, which we know how to do, or stretching everything, which we know how to do. We need to stretch or lengthen, or the word I, I like best, open. Open the inner legs and contract the outer legs. Notice how this work of the legs changes the experience in the torso, changes the experience in the skull, changes the experience of the breath and the mind. Maintain this work of the legs, lengthen through your side ribs, from your hips to your armpits, create more length. And again, we wanna look at the two sides. Notice which side may not be responding. Maybe there was an injury there, maybe there was a surgery and, or, or maybe nothing and it's just not quite awakened. And can you send intelligence to that side of the body as well? Allow the shoulders to release down away from the sides of your neck and lengthen from your inner armpits to your inner elbows. The elbows draw down. And again, we are seeking an evenness on the two sides. Keeping the elbows where they are, take the palms together. Move your shoulder bones away from each other. Thumbs touch your chest, rest your eyes into your cheekbones and let your face become completely still. See that your palms touch evenly, left to right, right to left. Begin to observe the breath as the breath breathes you.
and directing the breath to fill both lungs evenly. Right side, left side. Also front and back. Are you just feeling the front chest or are you allowing the breath to fill the chest and the back chest, the top back? And maintaining the state of observation, let's chant the syllable on three times together. Exhaling completely, deep inhalation. Om. Om. Lifting your sternum towards the ceiling, lower your chin towards your heart. Release your hands onto your thighs with your palms up. And with your eyes closed, raise your head. Gently let your eyelids open. Straighten your legs. Fingertips by your hips. And you can decide whether you want to lift or be on the floor. It's up to you. Press the tops of your thighs down. Not, don't just jam the knees down, especially those like me that are away from the floor. Don't just, just jam the knees down, but do press the tops of the thighs down. And notice which thigh responds first or more. When I do this, my, my left thigh it goes, presses down and my right thigh does nothing. <laughs> it's true been doing this for 20 years, but I can bring my awareness to my right thigh and I can press that down. Of course, when I do that, it adjusts the pressure of my sit bones. So now I have to go back to my sit bones and figure out how to press my thighs evenly and balance evenly on my sit bones. And if you're wondering, we could spend an hour and a half doing just that. We won't, but we could. Lengthen the inner thighs from the inner thigh through the inner knee, through the inner heel. Descend the flesh of the inner thighs and draw the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. So again, very strong on the outer legs and opening of the inner legs and seeking an evenness, which leg works more, harder. And can you spread the awareness So you can bring your toes a little higher, George. That's the one. Separate your legs. Upadista konasana. Ensure that your kneecaps and toes point up. So for most of us, that means you have to turn the thighs in slightly, which helps Descend the flesh of the inner thighs. You've heard that before. So toes up, toes straight up at the ceiling. Don't point forward, but toes straight up towards the ceiling. Kneecaps pointed up. Tops of the thighs pressing down. Don't just do it in the knees, but the thighs press down. 
you know, eventually, if you've been doing this for a long time and you really know how to work the thighs, eventually the knees may press back, but, but too many people are pressing the knees without pressing the thighs. And then, and then, you know, they go, my knees hurt five years later, you know, well, yes, they do. So we're trying to stop that knee pain, press the thighs down, lengthen the inner thighs, same instructions, inner thigh through the inner knee, through the inner heel, pushing the balls of the big toes, toes up, toes up. From the upper inner thighs, also draw back towards the abdomen. So that whole inner leg is lengthening, fingertips by your hips, or, or you know, if you're not on lift, can be palms by your hips, that's fine. Descend the flesh of the inner thighs, draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact those hips together. And again, which leg works first? Which leg works more? Which leg holds it? Am I the only one where one leg likes to do the work and the other one doesn't? How do you what? Lengthen. It's gonna come from here for me. When I learned, and to be clear, the first, she asked, uh, how do you release that, the hip flexor part? Um, when I learned how to lengthen fully from the inner knee to the lower abdomen, my yoga practice completely changed. I don't think I even got that instruction. I, I, 10 years, 12 years of yoga, and then I heard that instruction. I'm like, because I always learned just to extend out, which is a good instruction. But then when I learned the opposite one, everything began to open up. And to be clear, I didn't know what they were talking about the first time. As most yoga instructions I received and I even give, the body doesn't really understand it often the first time. But really begin to open up, draw the outer knees to the outer hips. So have the outer quadricep do more work so that that top part doesn't have to do it. But it's not like it's not gonna work at all. I mean, there, 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 there's work there too, because that has to press down. The admin can also help. I know it's hard just to sit, isn't it? Is that, when, when, we, when can we stop working? <laughs> when can we stand up and stop working so hard? Don't worry, we'll get there. People always hate the pose they're in until they do the next pose, and then they wish they were in the pose before. <laughs> Just how yoga works. And see what I did here, Carla? I learned from you. It helps, especially when you have glasses on. Think of you every day. Every day. <laughs> I go, what? It's a special way to wear the mask that was at home. All right, take hold of the inside of the knees. Pull straight up, feet together. And again, you can decide whether you wanna lift or not. Fingertips by your hips. Still balanced evenly on your sit bones, yes? Or not quite and seeking it? It's interesting, when I, when I started yoga, I thought I was always balanced even on, they'd say balance even on your, on your sit bones and I thought I did it. So either, either my body is way, way more <laughs> messed up than it used to be, but that's not the case. Or I just have more awareness and I can really tell the intricacy and I wonder if I've ever in my life been balanced evenly on my sit bones, but I still seek it every moment, moment by moment. And we get glimpses, there's a glimpse. We celebrate the glimpse. And of course, lengthen from the inner thigh through the inner knees and from the upper inner thighs back towards the abdomen. The complete lengthening of the groin, which is connects at the lower abdomen, the knee. It doesn't stop at the top of the thigh. I still remember after that class, I, I, I went home, went to Google and, and uh, typed in groin to go, really? Because I'd always learned that the groin was the inner thigh. And I go, there it was, the pictures of the muscle connecting to the lower abdomen. I go, okay, I get it. Descend the flesh of the inner thighs, also quite important. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. And don't push the abdomen forward. Don't push it forward. The front bottom ribs move towards the back body. 
press the heels. This pose is especially good for men. I love it. in the studio, we have half men here. Good, beautiful. Happy to have the women too, to be clear. It's just, you, know, you, guys, you guys know, usually it's, you know, 10 women. And when I was doing yoga, I, I, most of the time I was the only male. And uh, occasionally there was another one there. There were two of us in a class of 30, 40 people. Press the heels. Because this pose is especially good. It's great for women too. All the abdominal organs, reproductive organs. For men, this is quite good for the prostate as we, as we get older. So you want to do this pose every day. Take your hands on the outside of the knees, push, to, push them together. Take hold behind one knee. There are two strands there. Draw the flesh towards the buttock, drag the heel. Behind the other knee, draw the flesh towards the buttock, drag the heel back to Dandasana. And just check in. The experience of Dandasana now will most likely be different after the, the legwork that we've just done. Still balance evenly on, on the sits bones, thighs, pressing down, lengthening, opening the inner legs, drawing the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together and seeking, at least seeking. I'm not saying you have to achieve it. You know, we talk about alignment on the left and right sides of the body. So let, let's be honest, we, we, can't, we can't really have it. It's something that doesn't exist because the body is not symmetrical. One lung is bigger than the other. There are organs on one side, other organs on the other side. We pretend we're symmetrical, we're not. But we can still seek it. And release, come to standing. Aren't you happy you're out of the sitting poses? Man, you're gonna to wanna to be back there in a minute. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, come to Tadasana, feet together. If you prefer feet hip distance apart, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, a hard on this one. So you choose, but if it's hip distance apart, that means hip sockets. It does not mean outer hips, hip sockets, okay? or you can take your feet together. If, you're, if your feet are hip distance apart, you wanna make sure that you have 10 toes pointing forward, that, that one or both of your feet are not pointed outward. And balance evenly on your feet. Another thing for the first, um, this one I may be a little, or maybe eight years of yoga. They said bounce evenly on your feet. I always thought it was bounce evenly on my feet. True story, kind of embarrassing to share, but it was in the shower, <laughs> swear to you. I can picture it in the shower and I'm standing there, balanced evenly on my feet when I discover that all my weight is on my left foot. And go, oh, I've been practicing Tadasana with all the weight on my left foot for eight years of yoga, plus who knows, you know, my whole life before then. So really bring your awareness to your feet and seek that even balance. And what do you need to do that? For many of us, it's that lifting of the outer knee to the outer hip and compacting the hips. Right? So those who've been with me a long time, I've shared it before, right? it's this right side, this right outer hip does not draw in as quickly as my left, just like pressing back, doesn't, it doesn't happen as fast. So when I can draw the Right outer knee to outer hip, and I'm pointing, not mirroring. This is my real right leg. Outer knee to outer hip, and draw that in. The balance on my feet changes. And I have to actually work, right? For pure beginners, we say work the sides equally. And George, you're, you're brand new to all this. So that's a fun, work the sides evenly. But I know many of you have been here for a long time. And then it's work the sides unevenly to create a sense of evenness. So whichever one of those works for you today, but for those who have been here for years, and this is how I work, I work my legs completely unevenly to achieve or get closer to a sense of evenness. 
and some of you, I can witness it, and I'm doing it too, you begin to wobble like a pendulum. You wobble back and forth. That means you're getting it. Thigh bones back, lengthen the inner legs, inner knees to the lower abdomen. Watch those knees, Carla. Shin bones forward, thighs back. Front bottom ribs towards the back body. Lengthen from the hips to the armpits and extend through the arms, Tadasana. So again, as we're looking at the two sides of the body, we work on the feet, work on the legs, maybe evenly or unevenly to get a sense of evenness. See if you can create an equal length on the two sides of the body. So from the hips to the armpits, which side is lengthening and which side is not quite doing it. And then as you extend through the arms, the arms work as hard as your legs do to be clear. It's not that the arms are hanging or dangling. So notice how hard your legs are working and match your arms to the legs, not harder, but not less hard. And which arm is awake and which one is not? And can you spread the intelligence to both arms? your arms out to the sides, drop the shoulders. From the armpits, rotate the arms up until the palms are up. Now notice how your front bottom ribs came forward. Take your front bottom ribs towards the back body and from your armpits, push your arms up. Don't allow them to come forward. All right, so Aaron, take your arms back down again. Take your arms in line with your torso. So, so they're not here, but they're out to the sides. I don't care how close the hands get together but don't let them come forward. Inhale, take the arms up, shoulders down, arms up. Don't worry if they get close together. Shoulders down, arms up, straighten the elbows, optimally for you today. And extend your fingers up, shoulders down. And take your triceps, the outer upper arms towards your nose. So rotate, there you go. Good, Jordan. Now do it with the other arm at the same time. There you go. Turn your hands out to the sides. Exhale, come down. One more time. Arms out to the sides. Drop the shoulders. Rotate the arms up. Drop the shoulders. Now watch those ribs. Front bottom ribs back. Are you still balancing evenly on the feet? From your armpits, push your arms up. Don't let them come forward. Rotate the triceps towards the nose. Both arms, not one. Both arms, triceps towards the nose. Shoulders down, arms up. And then hands out to the sides. Exhale, come down. And Tita Trikonasana, triangle pose, fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart. It's fine to step. It's a wide stance with your feet below your hands as your arms are extended. Drop your shoulders, extend the arms. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. Take your front heel in line with your back arch. Make sure this right the right toes point straight to the side of the room. Now press through the outer rim of the back heel, turn the front thigh out, watch that, watch both knees, Carl, okay? Turn the front thigh out so your knees align with the top of your foot and lift your outer knees to your outer hips, compact your hips together. Now keep pressing that back heel, inhale, on your exhalation, take your right hand down, left arm up. Remember what we did uh, last week, George, where we stayed up a little higher and took the torso back. Don't worry about going so far down. You take your hand higher. That's it. So you get the open chest. Doesn't that feel better? Yeah. It feels better. It's better. <laughs> Press the back heel. Rotate that front thigh. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Now reach to that top arm, pull yourself up and out, parallel your feet, and we'll go over to the other side. Hopefully you can see me a little bit. I know we got that light in the way, Olivia. Right foot in, left leg out. Press the back heel, turn the front thigh, lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact those hips together. Now keep pressing the back heel. Reach with your back arm as you press the back heel, and then exhale and come down. Pressing the back heel. Turn the front thigh out, 
lift, you stay in, I'm coming out. Just because I come out, because I'm lazy, doesn't mean you get to be. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Really compact the hips together. Now rotate the torso. That's it. Now other way, towards the ceiling, towards the ceiling. But don't let the front thigh turn in. Extend those arms. And then pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. Kodasana. Bounce evenly on the feet. Come right back to that. Thighs back, outer knees to outer hips. Compact the hips. Which one has the intelligence? Which one doesn't? Spread the awareness. One more time. Fingertips up. Bend your legs. Jump or step. Left foot and right leg up. Press the back heel. Turn the front thigh. Lift your outer knees to your outer hips. Inhale. Exhale. Right hand down. Now, everyone, take your left hand on your hip. Take the back thigh towards the wall behind you. The back thigh towards the wall behind you. That will take your left ribs back and help turn your torso. Of course, at the same time, for many of us, the front thigh turns in. So turn the front thigh out. And some of you will notice that the back thigh went forward when you did that. Take the back thigh back and turn the front thigh out at the same time. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. And imagine there's a wall behind you, lean on that wall behind you and take your head on that imaginary wall behind you. And then finish the pose, extend your arm up. Observe your pose. Reach with the top arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Take your hands on your hips just for a moment. Keep the feet wide, just because I'm in a good mood. Take a breath. And then extend the arms, right foot and left leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch. Press the back heel. Make sure your front heel is in line with your back arch. Turn the front thigh out. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Now keep pressing the back heel, reach with your back arm, exhale, come down. Take your right hand on your hip now. So again, this back thigh goes back and when you do, it draws the right ribs with you and turns the torso towards the ceiling. It also allows you to press the back heel more. But the front thigh ends up turning in, so turn the front thigh out. When you turn the front thigh out, you notice that the back thigh falls forward. Do press through everyone through the ball of the front big toe. So now, as you press through the back heel and the ball of the front big toe, can you at the same time take the back thigh back and turn the front thigh out? Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Now imagine that wall behind you, lean on that wall, put the, your head against that wall, and then finish the pose, extend the arm up. Observe your pose. Reach through those fingertips, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. Tadasana, checking in now, we're back to a symmetrical pose. It can be feet together, feet hip distance apart is fine. If your feet are hip distance apart, make sure those toes point forward. See when the feet are together, the toes go forward. But when they're apart, we don't always know what the feet are doing. So you have to take extra awareness and send it to your feet. But we immediately go back to the work. The thigh bones pressing back, not the knees, but the thighs. The lengthening of the inner legs from the inner knee to the lower abdomen. The lifting of the outer knees to the outer hips, that outer quadricep muscle, compacting the hips together. And then examining the legs and seeing which is working more or less and adjusting as is needed, spreading the awareness as is needed. Lengthen through the side ribs, again, seeking an evenness on the two sides, moving your shoulders down and away from your ears, extend through your arms. Good. 
Interlace your fingers together, turn your palms out, push the webbing of your fingers together, inhale, come up. Hug your upper arms into your ears, extend your wrist towards the ceiling. The shoulders go down as the arms go up. Now watch those front ribs. Notice how the front ribs go forward. Uh, you, you do what I do, do, Joe. They say, take the front ribs back and I throw my butt back. Do the same thing, I've been called on it. So the top of the butt goes down, but take the front ribs into the body. Yeah, some of us don't know our ribs from our butt. It is true. And then release your arms out to the sides. Exhale, come down. So we'll do the other side with Tadasana. Press those thighs back. Take the front ribs towards the back body. Take the top of the buttocks down at the same time. When you take the top of the buttocks down, it creates room for the front bottom ribs. But now the back bottom ribs have to go in and up. So the front bottom ribs go back and the back bottom ribs, if you're not sure where they are, take your hands on your back and feel your back until you feel some bones there. You go, okay, those are my ribs and take those in and up. So front bottom ribs back, back bottom ribs in. Interlace your fingers together the opposite way. Take the opposite first finger on top. Turn your palms out. Front bottom ribs back, back bottom ribs forward. Inhale, come up. Keep the awareness on those ribs even as you're taking the arms up. Don't lean the shoulders back. Shoulders stay over the hips. Hug your upper arms into your ears. Extend through your wrists. Olivia, see if you can keep your fingers in one line instead of sticking some of them up. That's it. The tips of the thumbs gently touch each other. And then extend your wrists up because then you can focus really on the wrists instead of the fingers, shoulders down. And then again, go into these two sides. Which side is working harder, more? Release your arms up to the side. Exhale, come down. Shoulders down. And release. Take a, a block on either side of your mouth. Um, take it towards the front of the mat. Front of the mat, Carla. We're doing Parvita Trikonasana. That's fine if you have one, you just move it to the other side. If you want another one, get it. no big deal. Fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or stuff. So take your hands on your hips. Um, I think you'll be happy with a little wider stance. The, the, the Parvita poses, um, Parvita Trikonasana, Revolve Trikonasana, you're not quite as extended as, um, as Utita Trikonasana. Um, but the legs are still wide apart. Left foot in, right leg out. But now we have to turn our torso to face the side. So pick up your back heel and take that left hip forward and then place your right heel down. And now take this block on the instep of your foot. Now still press the back heel. The back thigh turns in, the front thigh turns out, and lift both outer knees to outer hips. Squeeze those hips together. Uh, and Joe, if you if you need the the slanted um, the the slanted wood plank for your back heel, take it. It's right behind the straps there. Not the cord around the uh, the slanted plank. Yeah. It's all right. Just leave the strap on the floor. It's fine. So compact the hips together and you want your outer heel pressing down on it. Try and get the outer heel actually on it. Now, there you go, good. All right, now extend your left arm up, reach up. Now reach forward, 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 forward. Extend your chest forward and then take your fingertips on the block. Now take your right hip back so the two sides of your torso are equal in length. Extend the chest forward, inhale, exhale, rotate, 
towards the straight leg, towards the back wall. So rotate your torso towards the back wall. That's it. Yes, this is a balancing pose. Um, you know what? Take the chair instead of the block. Just put the chair. So foot forward and then the hand will go on the chair. That nice and close. There you go. Rotate. And then if you have your balance, you can extend your right arm up. Extend those arms away from each other. And then take your hand back on your hip. Press into your back heel. Your balance is in your back heel and your left arm. Press the back heel and swing with your left arm up. And watch that block. It's in your way, parallel your feet. Everybody kind of get it? The words making sense anyway? It's not the easiest pose. Right foot and left leg out. Pick up that back heel and square the hips to the side wall. And then again, take that block and put it on your instep. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Compact those hips together. And then extend the right arm up, reach up. Right, so press into the back heel, extend through the right arm. We're extending to that whole side of the body, extending the spine, inhale, press the back heel, exhale, come forward, forward, forward. Keep the chest moving forward, fingertips on the block. But now the left side of your body is shorter than the right. So you have to help that. Take that left hip back, lengthen the left side of the body, inhale, and on your exhalation, begin to turn, rotate. Inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, Turn. And don't just turn the shoulders, turn at the abdomen to turn the shoulders. Um, the chair has to come on the inside, George. Take the chair here and take your other hand down. Closer to the foot, closer to the foot. Your other foot goes back. That's it. Right hand on the chair. There you go. Now turn to the back wall. There you go. Got it. If you'd like, you can certainly extend the right arm, the left arm up to you. Straight up. And then hand on hip, back heel, right arm. Swing yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. And just step your feet together. So uh, here's what's going on here. I'm gonna guess some of that is going on out there. And it's that when we come down, so hopefully I can get to a space where everybody can kind of see me. We tend to lean back. So we want the spine to come down straight and we want it to stay parallel to those walls. And what I'm seeing a lot of people doing is doing this kind of back bend thing. See how I'm leaning back here? I'm not really in a straight line because it makes my chest feel more open, but I'm not really turning and I'm doing kind of weird things with my spine. So when I come down, I wanna be completely parallel to those side walls. And how far you come down, it depends on you. You know, the final pose, you're on the floor on the outside of your foot. I don't have a lot of balance when I do that one. You can, yeah, you can take the, the hand on the outside of your foot or a low block or inside of your foot. But, you know, when I'm struggling with balance, I, I use the high block on the inside of my foot and focus then on the turn itself. So that's what you want, okay? So resist that, that back bend, which makes you feel more open, but is not actually helping with the turn. Clear, words make sense? Okay. So one more time, from Tadasana. So your chair is going to go on the other side there. Fingertips up. You can jump or step, bend your legs, jump or step. You just step, George, because you got the chair there. The chair, chair's on the mat, you never jump. 
because it's a tripping hazard. So hands on your hips, left foot and right leg out, pick up the back heel, take that left hip forward and square the hips and then place the heel back down. Now place the block or make sure that chair is where you want it to be. Right, so if the block is too low for you at home, take, take a chair instead of the block. So square those hips. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips. There's still the lengthening of the inner groins as well. That's all still there. Now left arm up, press the back heel, lengthen through the, through the side ribs, lengthen through the spine, inhale. Now, when you come down, keep that spine parallel to the walls. Don't turn, don't turn. Keep the chest forward and then take the fingertips on the block. Now, again, your hand is on your hip. So the right hip goes back and the chest goes forward, but don't lose that straight line that you have. Don't lean back in this one. Instead, keep the spine parallel to the front and side walls and then rotate from the base of the spine towards the top of the spine. Turn your abdomen to turn your shoulders. Don't tuck your chin, the head does go back, so there's no chin tucking here. So Olivia, you're still a little off center. See if you can take your whole torso towards the wall, towards the back wall. And rotate from there. Take your right hip towards me. Right hip and left hip, but there, yes, yes, yes. And you too, Carla, take your right hip back and towards me. And if you want to extend the arm up, you're welcome to press that back heel, Joe. Enjoy it. Pretend it's your favorite pose in the world. And then place your hand on your hip, press into your back heel, swing with your left arm up and out. That's where the balance is and parallel your feet, take a breath, and we'll do the other side. Right foot and left leg out. Take the back heel, square those hips, take the back heel down. Take the block on the instep of your foot or the chair, whatever you have. Now pressing the back heel, extend the, the right arm up. Still, outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips, lengthen the groins. Now extend the, the sideways, extend the spine, inhale, press the back heel, exhale, come forward. But remember, you're taking your spine down in a completely straight line, and then fingertips on your block. Keep that spine. Now, to be clear, the spine is not a straight line. It, it has curves in it, but it is parallel to the, the front and back walls. Take the left hip back, but keep the spine parallel to those uh, front and back walls. And then inhale on your exhalation, Rotate the torso, keep it parallel to the walls. Don't let it move forward. Don't let it move back, but keep it parallel to those walls and turn. Other way, right hand down. No, 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 keep the chair, keep the chair. Switch hands, turn to the back wall. That's it. Feel the twist there? This is a twist. Parvita, revolved. And Chai is not even here to make sure I pronounce the word right, because I say Pavrita wrong. And if you'd like, you can extend your arm up. Uh, so Olivia, take your left hip back and towards me. Enjoy your pose. And then left hand on hip. Back heel, right arm is your balance. Swing yourself up and out. Swing yourself up and out. Watch the block as you parallel your feet. And jump or step your feet together. Padasana. Are we having fun yet? Only four more hours left. <laughs> Eyes back. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Compact the hips together. Take the, these blocks to the back side of the mat now. You're still going to use the chair. Don't worry about your block, George. Use the chair. I want to use the chair again. You're going to use the chair. Just take, take the chair like that on that, the right side. You'll get used to it. 
What is your third class? Second class? Oh, that's right. The first time you were here, you didn't take a class. That's right. He was just visiting, checking us out. Well, we're glad you're here. So fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or step. You're gonna, you're gonna step, George. Jump or step your feet apart. And notice how my foot is in front of the chair. So you want your foot to take, that's it. And adjust so your foot's in front of the chair. Left foot in, right leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch. And then if you're using a block, you take the block, put it on the outside of your heel. And if you want a higher lift, you, use this, you can use the chair. With Tita Parjvil Konasana, extended side angle pose. So we're back to the work of triangle pose where the back thigh goes back, press the back heel, the front thigh turns out and you lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Inhale, exhale, bend your right leg. Inhale, exhale, hand on the block or hand on the chair. So you're gonna take your hand on the chair, that's it. And then extend the left arm up, rotate the arm so the palm fixes your ear. As you press the back heel, extend your arm over your ear. That's it, Olivia. Just keep spacing your neck, Olivia, okay? And try and keep your knee over your ankle. So your knee's coming towards me. Keep it over the end. Good. Yes. That's just to protect the knee. And then pressing into the back heel, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Then we'll go to the other side, right foot and left leg out. Move your block to the other side. Move your chair to the other side. Front heel in line with your back arch. Make sure there's space for you to put your foot in front of the chair. That's it, good George. Pressing the back heel, turn the front thigh out. Lift the outer knees to the outer hip. Now keep pressing the back heel, bend the front leg. It's a 90 degree angle, knee over the ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. Don't let your knee go past your ankle. Exhale, take your hand onto the block. Block is next to your heel. Right arm goes up, rotate the arm so your palm faces your ear. Inhale, exhale, extend the arm over your ear. Send that whole right side of your body. Sean, see if you can turn your torso a little bit more towards the ceiling. Take the, that, ah, good. You feel that difference? Observe your pose. Imagine this is, the favorite pose, your most favorite pose in the world. You get that you do that for every pose when you're in it, right? Now reach through your arm and pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet and jump or step your feet together. Move your block or chair to the other side. If you have two blocks, you're all set. All right, last of the standing poses, unless I change my mind. One more time, Utita Parjo Konasana. Fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or step. Occasionally I do change my mind, but we'll see. Left foot in, right leg out. Back thigh back, turn the front thigh up. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Now, when you bend that front leg, I want you to direct the knee, not so it doesn't go towards the big toe, but that it goes directly over the center of the foot so it's over the ankle. Inhale, exhale, bend that knee and make sure it's going straight ahead, not towards the big toe. Inhale, exhale, hand on the block, put the block next to your heel or on the chair is fine. And then everybody take your left hand on your hip. Just take your left hand on your hip for a moment. Now, when we come here, the back thigh and hip tend to fall forward. You're actually looking really good there, Sean. So you're fine. But everyone else, take that back thigh back so that you can press the back heel. When that happens, the knee tends to come forward. Take the knee back over the ankle so the back thigh moves back and the front knee moves back. At the same time, the front buttock moves forward. So back thigh back, front knee back, front buttock forward. And if you get that, you begin to feel the torso turn because the back thigh moves the ribs back and the buttock moving forward, the front buttock moving forward moves the, the lower ribs forward and the torso turns. How beautiful. Rotate your torso towards the ceiling, head back, and then extend the arm up. Rotate the arm, finish the pose, extend the arm over your ear.
And then the most important instruction, observe your pose. Soft face, soft jaw. Again, back, thigh back, front knee back, front buttock forward. Uh, Joe, take the front bottom ribs towards the back body. Yes. Reach through your arm and pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Hands on hips for a moment. Take a breath. If you need to adjust props to the other side, do so. And extend the arms. Now that goes to the back. I know every pose is a little different. Right foot and left leg out. So again, start it here. Take the back thigh back, turn the front thigh out. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Keep that back thigh going back. When you bend the knee, take it directly over that top of the foot, over the ankle, or in line with the top of the foot, not over the top of the foot because it stays over the ankle, but in line with the top of the foot. Inhale, exhale, left hand on the block, and then take your right hand onto your head. So again, let's work the legs. The right thigh is going to go back. Press the back heel. The front knee, the left knee, goes back, so it's over the ankle. So there's this opening in the pelvic area. The front buttock goes forward. So back, thigh back, front knee back, front buttock forward. And again, when you do that, hopefully you feel as the back thigh goes back, it moves the left ribs back. As the front buttock goes forward, it moves the right ribs forward and helps you turn the torso. So rotate the torso, head back, and now extend the arm up, rotate the arm, as you press the back heel, extend the arm over your ear. There's the pose. Again, back thigh back. Front knee back. Front buttock forward. Soft jaw, soft face, soft lips, soft tongue. Reach through that arm. Pull yourself up and off. Parallel your feet. Jump your step, your feet together. Tadasana. So now we're back to symmetrical. Thighs back, outer knees to outer hips. Compact the hips, lengthen through the side ribs, shoulders down. Of course, the lengthening of the groins as well. Spreading your awareness to the sides of your body equally. It takes an amazing amount of work to do that. This is the second hardest pose in yoga. Not all these poses we're doing. The hardest is Shavasana, in case you were wondering, because it's easier for us to use the mind to cause the body to do this and that than to just re release it and do nothing. But this is the pose we need to master. We master this and we can begin to master the others. And then release. All right, uh, downward facing dog. You can use a chair or blocks if you want. Otherwise, start on your hands and knees. Press down to the ball of the first finger and thumb. Rotate the upper arms out. Push into the floor, lengthen through those arms. And then turn your toes under, straighten your legs. Now when we do that, we begin to lose the arms. So again, press in the ball of the first finger and thumb and rotate the upper arms out. Keep the front bottom ribs moving towards the back body. Inhale. On your exhalation, come into downward facing dog. So take your thighs back, take your chest towards your thighs, and take your sit bones towards the ceiling. Press down to the ball of the first finger and thumb, and rotate the upper arms out. Now take your sit bones up and back as you press your thighs back. And extend from the center of your calf through the tendon, through the heel towards the floor. The outer heels move down. The outer hips 
move up. Downward facing dog. Olivia, if you're able, wider between your hands and feet, longer between your hands and feet, more distance, if it's accessible. Of course, you have to, you have to be the judge of what's accessible. Th yeah, that looks nice. Thighs back. On your exhalation, then your knees come into child's pose. Feet together, knees apart, head resting. If it doesn't hit the floor, rest your head on a block. Rest your head on a block. And take your hands underneath your shoulders, push to come up and lie back on your mat. Um, Ramona and Olivia, you gotta be lying back. If you need to, you need to extend your arms out to the side. So if you need to come a little bit away from the wall, do so. So lie back with your arms out to the sides and your legs bent with your feet on the floor. And then bend your legs into your chest, arms up to the side like this. That's it. Your choice, palms up or palms down today. Palms up, it opens the shoulders a little bit. Palms down is a little bit more grounding. Both are, I believe both are acceptable. Bend your legs into your chest. Keep your thighs together. So arms are to the sides. Thighs will stay together the whole time. Thighs stay together. Turn your abdomen to the left as you take your knees towards the right elbow. Now, knees go to the right, knees go that way, but the abdomen comes, this, comes to the left. So the abdomen and the legs are going in different directions. Keep your feet next to each other, Carla. So feet are next to each other. You want your thighs to stay together, which means the bottom thigh needs to push up into the top thigh. Keep your left shoulder blade down, push into your right shoulder to keep the left shoulder shoulder blade down. Turn your abdomen to the left as the knees go to the right. And again, that bottom thigh needs to push into the top thigh. And then with your bottom leg, push to come up and then place your feet on the floor. Square your hips and square your shoulders. And bend your legs back into your chest. Again, the abdomen will turn to the right as the knees go to the left. Inhale, exhale, knees go to the left, abdomen to the right. Keep the thighs together, the bottom thigh pressing into the top thigh. Keep your right shoulder, shoulder blade down. You have to press into the left shoulder to keep your right shoulder, shoulder blade down. Abdomen to the right as the knees go to the left. Bottom thigh pushing into the top thigh. And then pushing with the bottom thigh, inhale, come up. Place your feet on the floor, square your hips and square your shoulders. Bend your legs into your chest one more time. Adamant turns to the left, knees go to the right. Hovering over your right elbow. The bottom thigh pushes into the top thigh. Press the right shoulder down to keep the left shoulder down. Abdomen to the right, to the left, knees to the right. Now, as you push the bottom thigh into the top thigh to keep them together, one final instruction, take your left outer hip away from your shoulder. And push with the bottom thigh, inhale, come up. Place your feet on the floor, square your hips and square your shoulders. Bend your legs back into your chest. 
Turn the abdomen to the right as the knees go to the left. Bottom thigh presses into the top thigh. Press into the left shoulder to keep your right shoulder down. Abdomen to the right, knees to the left. And then as you press the bottom thigh into the top thigh, take your right outer hip away from your shoulder. And push with the bottom thigh, inhale, come up. Place your feet on the floor, square your hips and square your shoulders. Bend your legs into your chest. Hold around both thighs now. Draw the thighs towards the torso. So you can hold around your shins, your knees, or, or behind your knees too, whatever is comfortable. Give yourself a hug here, a real hug, like you mean it. Say something kind to yourself. The purpose of yoga is to still the fluctuations of the mind so that you can bathe in your own true splendor. Can you take a moment here now to bathe in your own true splendor? When you feel ready, on your inhalation, release your legs, allow your feet to fall to the floor. Straighten your legs one at a time. Let your legs fall to the sides. Take your arms comfortably out to the sides and let go completely. You can close your eyes if that's comfortable. Rest your eyes into your cheekbones and let go. You are now in the hardest pose of yoga. But it is doable. We just need to pay attention. We need to pay attention to letting go, to giving up control, not seeking control, move this, move that, turn more, turn less, rotate, but giving up any sense of control and instead finding a sense of surrender to the mother earth below you. Letting the legs surrender. Letting the arms surrender. Letting the torso surrender. Rest your eyes onto your front brain. Rest your front brain onto your back brain. Let the brain itself become smaller, denser, withdrawing from the bones of your skull. Release all of your facial features. Your jaw, lips, tongue, throat. Let go everything, hold nothing. Let go everything, hold nothing. Let go. Surrender. Shavasana.
Begin slowly coming out, take a soft, smooth, peaceful inhalation and a longer, smooth, peaceful exhalation. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your nose. Bend your legs, place your feet on the floor with your knees together, feet apart. Take your hands onto your abdomen or onto your chest. Let the healing energy of your hands penetrate your body, pierce through your layers and heal. Whatever it is you may need healing with today. So George, allow your legs to bend, okay? You just bend your legs, take your feet on the floor. Yeah, just to relieve the back, that's it. When you feel ready, extend your right arm past your right ear, roll to the right. If you want to roll to the left, that's fine. Pick a side. Roll to the side, be there for a moment. And then to come up, turn your torso towards the floor first. Tuck your chin towards your chest. Take your top hand, push into the floor to come up. Your head comes up last. And then come up to sitting. Cross your legs the opposite way you crossed at the beginning of class. Or if you want to be in Virasana, that's fine as well. Bring your palms together. Take a moment to observe your practice. What's different? What's changed? As you observe what's different, what's changed, notice if, you're, if your awareness is drawn to a particular part of the body, then perhaps spread the awareness to encompass the whole body. Also the breath. <coughs> Excuse me, promise it's not COVID. And the mind. Let's close our practice together by chanting one collective OM. Deep inhalation. OM. Can you let your eyelids open? Smile. Namaste. Bow to the divine within you.